summer, which is cherished hymns that teach. And today we're talking about uh, God in the storm of life as a foundation of, of life and hope. And so we'll see that. We'll hear about that. You'll notice that there is a, a lighthouse on the front of the bulletin. You'll also recognize that in the hymns as well, and even in our liturgy and all of that, we're talking about kind of the sea theme of God rescuing us. And so we'll hear that, and then we'll end with a, the Hank Williams, I Saw the Light. The first hymn, actually, is one that um, we may want to practice. Are, you, are you able to practice that? So, I'm sorry, I put her on the spot. We want to welcome those that are watching by screen. This is a Navy hymn that has to do as well, too, with light. And we'll, we'll just, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. All right, well, we'll, we'll play through the tune. rise and greet those around us with a hand of fellowship and welcome. God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted in, by streams of water. It yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. We sing our opening hymn.
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we gather to hear the words and the teachings of our Lord, let us prepare by confessing our need to hear him. God has given his son to die for you and to give you the forgiveness of all your sins. Upon this, your confession, and I as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We invite the children to come up for the children's message. some rope here, Vernon, okay? And uh, one of the things that is great about rope is you can tie things up, can't you? You can tie up your little brother or your... No, no, you don't want to do that. Well, let's say you were out in the water and you needed to be rescued. How can rope help you? How do you think? So let's say over there there was someone in the water and we had this rope. How could we help them? Yeah, right. We could throw the rope over there like that, and we could pull them in. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yes. Yeah. So we, we could rescue a person, and we could save them, right? And sometimes people do that. People who work for, in the ocean sometimes are called the Coast Guard, and they take care of people, especially if your boat is run out of gas or your boat is in trouble and you need some help. They can use rope to rescue you. You think God rescues us? Just like you. Okay, just like you. Yeah, how does God rescue us? Who did he send to us to help us? Jesus, right? Jesus throws a lifeline to us and pulls us to himself. And in, in turn, he gives us faith and he gives us salvation. And isn't that a wonderful thing? Yeah, it is. He's kind of the light when we're lost and draws us to him. And so that's a good thing to know and to also look toward, right? So let's pray. Would you fold your hands with me and we'll pray? We'll pray, dear Jesus, watch out for us, rescue us, and call us to yourself. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. A little later, I'm going to have some slides on the screen that you guys can watch, okay? All right, you all can go sit down now. Thank you all for coming up. We invite you to follow along with our scripture lessons found in our bulletins. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 14. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant, let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, while I'll bring a morsel of bread <clears throat> that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, 
three seas of fine flour, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man, who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk, and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. About this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the um, book of Colossians, the first chapter, verses 21 through 29. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continued in faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I became a minister, according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching, everyone with all wisdom, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his, his energy that he powerfully works within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Shall we go? The Holy Gospel for today, according to St. Luke, the t 10th chapter. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. You may be seated. We sing 576.
tune actually that we were singing was 575, so 576. So what I'm trying to say is in our hymnal, you'll notice that there are two hymns. So if you want to open up your hymnal as kind of the backdrop to our sermon today, we want to look at that because this really is a hymn that we're going to look at. As you may recall, during this summer, we're looking at cherished hymns that teach. And today we're looking at here the theme of rescue and also uh, life and salvation. And so we want to look a little bit at that, um, that hymn for a moment, and just to recognize that. The tagline in verse 576 is, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. For my opening today, I want you to look at this picture, okay? And if you'd go to the next slide. This actually is a, a, a church uh, called St. Peter's in, Green, excuse me, in Greenport, New York. And it's really the place where my grandparents attended during the summers. And the interesting thing about this um, is it's, it's set in a, in a town that was known for its whaling and also its shipping. And so when it was designed back in the 1950s, there was a nautical theme that was chosen. As a child, I marveled at the fact being that the pulpit was the, the bow of a ship, something I had not seen in, in church architecture. And then there on, at the lectern, there is a symbol of a lighthouse and the pyramid, that green pyramid there. And then next to it is the rails that look like the rails of a ship. And then there's hanging above the lectern a, a, a ship with all of its sails in full gale. And I, as a child, wondered about this church. Why exactly is it a nautical theme? And so when I was about 12, 13, I remember going up to the pastor and asking him the question, why is there so much nautical theme here in this church? And he looked at me and he said, welcome aboard. And then he began to give me this explanation. Actually, if you look at church architecture, this area where people sit is called the nave. The word nave has a, a, a direct connection to the word navy. Both nave and navy are from the Latin word meaning ship. And that the church itself has been designed as a ship in our thinking. And that's what he kind of went on to tell me. And if you think about us as a ship, the, the church itself as a ship, we begin to kind of think about the direction in which we're going, right? We are going toward Jesus, the light of the world. And like a lighthouse, the ship is on a journey. Sometimes there's rough waves that the ship experiences, that the church of God experiences. Other times we, we comfort each other when things are calm, but when difficulty and strife come, we begin to kind of help each other out as shipmates. And really, the earliest image of the church has been a ship, a boat. If you were to travel to Europe and in the Middle East and in places like that, and you were to go into the catacombs, Christians would put the ark, Noah's ark, on the wall. And that many times became an early symbol of the church. And I believe that's kind of where this theme of the nave or the navy comes from. And it kind of is an interesting thing to think about. I mean, you can go to the next slide. When we think about Jesus as our pilot, our captain, we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But when we think about it, right, the story that comes to mind is that Jesus calms the storm. And I, I think we're aware of this, right? They, they were fishermen upon the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee was not a big, big place. I mean, it probably would be equal to one of our larger lakes here in Texas. But the interesting geography was that it was very close to the Mediterranean on one side, and on the other side, there were large cliffs. And so when warm weather would come in and it would, it would hit, the high and the low pressures would mix and there would be these storms. The story we know about that Jesus is with them in the boat and as they're fishing, Jesus is sleeping because he's very tired of the things that he's been doing as he's been preaching and all of a sudden this storm comes. Now these are fishermen 
who lived a life of fishing. And so they knew what storms were. They knew what bad storms were and storms that were okay. And the image of Jesus here is that of one who calms the storm. And I think that that's a good image for us when we begin to talk a little bit about this hymn and also the themes of rescue and being piloted by Jesus and standing upon, not sinking ground, but standing upon Christ. Think about it. We, we have Noah's Ark in the early part of the Bible. We also have stories from Psalms. And if you read Psalms, you'll read about the Psalms where, God, where David and others are crying out to God because the water of life has overcome them. And he actually describes them as a roaring waters. And in one Psalm, he cries out and says, don't let me be overcome by the water. And then we also know about this story of Jesus who calms the storm. And then we also know that Peter, excuse me, Paul as well too was involved with seafaring as he traveled throughout the Mediterranean to bring the gospel to people's lives. You can turn to the next slide for a moment. I want to point this out because I think that it's an important theme that, 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 that drives home the very fact that in the midst of life's storms, Jesus is our anchor. And this actually comes from, from Hebrews chapter 6. And it's a good reminder of that theme that we're looking at today about Jesus being our anchor. And this comes straight from Scripture. It is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. And then the rest of the text is, and that is Jesus Christ. I think when we look at life for a minute and we begin to look at some of the hymns that we're singing today, and if you were actually to look at both the hymn that we're looking at that we sang for our opening and also for the hymn that we'll sing at um, our uh, communion, all pick up this theme about the sea and sea travel. I know that that sounds strange to us in our thinking, but you know, Several generations ago, the sea was the place of transport. We also know the destruction in our own life and what happens when the waters are not calm and the storms come. This is actually from the seawall there in Galveston. If you've been to Galveston, you know that the seawall holds back the waves when the storms come. But many years before that, we know that one of the great destructions in our own state came when a hurricane came and hit the coastal island. And it led such destruction. And I believe this statue kind of echoes the theme of crying out to God for help. You see, if we're to look at these, these themes for a minute throughout our hymnody, and the church has written hymns in regards to this, we can begin to look at the hymns in, in several ways. And do me a favor, open up your hymnal there to 576 for a minute, and you'll see these themes that, that kind of go through the hymn. Verse 2 has this, When dark veils his loving face, I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale. My anchor holds within the veil. You'll recognize that that theme from Hebrews and as well too, life being a gale, a storm. And isn't that true? I mean, when life gives you ups and downs, when the theme of pain and suffering come our way, when test results, when we lose our job, when children are ill and sick. Life can bring ups and downs to us. And just like the sea, if we're not anchored, what will happen? We'll be overcome, and we soon will be destroyed. This is, again, what's picked up in the third ver verse, what he says, His oath, His covenant, the blood, support me in the raging flood. When every earthly storm, excuse me, prop gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand. If we're to look at the hymns of the church for a minute, and we look at this theme of rescue on the sea, 
We will see that the hymns point in several ways to the very fact, first, that life is a storm. It has ups and downs, and we never can know when we're safe. The second is that we need a re reliable pilot. If you'd open up your hymnal to 715 for a minute, and you look at our communion hymn, Savior, excuse me, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. If you spend any time on the water or near the ocean, you recognize that there are pilots that are needed, navigators, people who come on board the ship and direct you into the harbor. Jesus, Savior, pilot me over life's temp tempestuous sea. Unknown waves before me roll, hiding roll in treacherous shoal. Chart the compass come from thee, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. See, our English hymns pick up this idea that Jesus is our pilot. And our hymnal has this hymn in it. And just look what it says there, the last hymn. When at last I near the shore and fearful breakers roar, twist me in peaceful rest. Then while leaning on thy breast, may I hear thee say to me, fear not, I will pilot thee. An interesting thing about this hymn, and uh, this hymn was written actually after a tragic ship loss. At the harbor of, of London, as one comes in there, there is a place called the Goodwin Sands. It has been a place of multitude of shipwrecks throughout the centuries. The earliest is recorded in the 12th century. The author of this hymn actually hearing a terrible story in the news about a ship hitting that. See, they had created a great rescue armada with ships to go out when ships would hit that. They put, it, they put several lighthouses as well, too, that, told, that kept ships away. But on this one occasion, during the 18, early 1800s, when the rescuers were trying to get to the ship, they were unable to get there because of the waves and the over 100 people perished. It's one of the reasons why, in hearing this, this poet wrote those words in regards to this hymn. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. It turns out that the Goodwin uh, sandbar, as it's called, is a place where even during the dry times, when the sandbar is seen, it's a very treacherous place because people can get sucked into the sand. And so he writes those words, this poet, but also this hymn writer, to point us to the very fact that the one who we look to is Jesus Christ. Let's look at that hymn for a minute to bring out that, 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 that marvelous understanding. And you'll look here for a minute at this next slide. The next slide there is Jesus himself saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness and will have the light of life. What is life like when you don't have the light of Christ? I mean, you're in the midst of darkness. You're overcome with fear, and there is no one there to help you. But think then of the themes of our hymns and also that of Scripture. Jesus himself identifies that he is the light of the world. And when we think about it, right, the theme of lighthouses draws our minds to the very fact that if ships are to be secure then they're to know where they're sailing. And the way in doing that is to have lighthouses. Some lighthouses draw warnings and say, stay away. Others of them call ships to a safe harbor. When we think about that applied to the church, the nave, the people of God sailing along in life, and whatever comes our way, whether it's high or low, whether it's calm or stormy, we look to the one who is our anchor, Jesus Christ. That's why this writer of this hymn brings to mind the very fact that the anchor which holds us, the solid rock in which we stand upon, is Christ Jesus. And whatever we face, stormy gale or whatever we face, the anchor that holds us is that of Jesus Christ. The theme for rescue is drawn out in these hymns. 
but it helps us to see a little bit that in previous generations, the fear of sea travel was a difficult one. Maybe in our day it's driving or maybe it's flying. We all want to find a safe harbor, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we rise and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, in our prayers, we want to pray especially for those that are in need of healing, those that are listed in our bulletin. We also want to pray for Alice Wenchy, who's with us today. We also want to pray for Debbie, and we also want to pray, too, for Melanie uh, Bullock, who will have surgery this coming week. Let us pray. God of heaven, we come before you. In the midst of life's storms, you bring us an anchor that we can hold to. We pray, Lord, that when our hearts are anxious and when our thoughts draw us away, we pray that you would fill us with your word and that as an anchor you would give us that hope that we hold to. Lord, we pray for those that struggle in this life with many problems and difficulties. We ask that you may give them safe harbor to find you as a comfort. We pray, Lord, for those that are listed in our bulletin and who are struggling with their health. We pray especially in highlighting those of Debbie who had surgery this week. We pray also, Lord, for Alice Winchie and ask that you be with her. We pray, Lord, also that you be with Melanie Bullock, who will have surgery in the coming week. Give strength, we pray, for these and many others. We pray, Lord, for your church on earth, that it may draw its course to follow you in a world that seems to be unanchored. We ask you, Lord, that you would give us strength strength to look ahead in the days to come. We pray especially, Lord, that you would bring rain to your creation. All your creation needs rain, O oh Lord, from the animals that live on this world to us who live among your creation and who draw our livings and our livelihood from good weather. We pray especially for those that defend us, for firefighters and those that work in operating rooms and nursing homes and places where there is need. We pray, Lord, that you'd bring peace among us, that we may find health and help, especially as we still deal with COVID in places. We pray for all of these things. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the blessings of life that you give to us, that you are the anchor that holds us. Strengthen us that we may be a witness to many, we pray. Lord, we also ask that you'd be with those that defend this nation, our armed forces, and especially those that serve in our Coast Guard that defend our seaways. Give them strength as they work to rescue and help those that are affected by storms. We pray, Lord, also for those that lead our nation. Above all, we pray for our president and for every other official who serves in every level of government. Help us to be a nation not divided, but combined with the understanding that we are a people who are free to worship you and follow your will. Be with those that lead us, Lord, to fulfill their oath of office. We pray for all of these things. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, you may be seated and we will receive our offerings to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is good and right on this day to give thanks to God the Father for the victory over death in the grave which he has granted to us through his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, Christ destroyed the power of death for all who believe in him by his glorious resurrection from the dead. And all the angels of heaven now sing his praise, the one who has been crowned the victor. All the saints of God who have gone before us now gather around his throne to worship him, adding their voices to those of the angels of God. We gather here today, celebrating with all those who are in heaven, the victory he has won for us made real as we celebrate and receive the gifts of his body and blood, therefore, with the angels and all the hosts of heaven, we lift our voices to praise his holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And also after supper, he also took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed also for you for the remission of sins. This do also in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to serve you constantly through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, I Saw the Light. Peggy for that song so please be seated on behalf of our congregation we welcome all of you and we welcome all of those that are watching as well by screen uh, we pray that your uh, week is going well this week we're looking um, at the book of Acts again we're looking at the third chapter and so we'd like to invite you to come and study it with us um, it's a good opportunity to kind of review the roots of the church and how the true church grew so again I want to thank you all for being here today and pray God would send us rain that's that's probably our biggest prayer. Um, fair weather as well, too, but um, as you know, in Texas, we get rain. Some of us get rain, some of us don't. It just comes and goes, but we need it. So uh, with that said, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.